Pastor Benny Hinn is celebrating 40 years of ministry, taking the gospel to the nations of the world. Look to our precious Jesus today who saves, heals, delivers, prospers, and blesses. This is your day for a miracle. I'm very glad Prophet Brian is with me. On today's program, Pastor Benny Hinn welcomes Brian Karn to This Is Your Day. The gift which operates in this prophet's ministry has been in great evidence in many of Pastor Benny's services, producing accurate results which have amazed viewers on previous broadcasts. And I say unto thee, prepare yourself for the days ahead. But now you shall begin to see my hand move, and even that thing concerning business that you desire God to favor. God said, I'm getting ready to open a door of increase into your hands, and I will cause my favor to tarry, tarry, tarry. Is that bass? Yes. Bass. What's your last name? Bass. All right. God's getting ready to blow your mind. This is your hour of visitation. Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody say, hey. You're going to receive a phone call not long from now. And I see them calling you. I don't know if they're going to call you Miss Grace or Miss Williams, but I see them calling you. What's your last name? William. Lift your hands. I see them calling you, and I see them telling you that a major door is opening for you concerning your career. Ah, uh, Octopolo, 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 Octopolo. How you say your last name? Apala. Okay, lift your hands. I'm in my vein, y'all. I'm in there. Uh, 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 uh. And every time I look at you, I keep hearing God with us. So your first name must be Emmanuel. What's your name? Emmanuel. Lift your hands. Everybody say, hey. hey. But I see in the realm of the spirit, I saw a doctor. A doctor walked up to me. When he walked up to me, he put a paper in my hand. On top of the paper, I saw the word fibromyalgia. This is what the Lord is saying to me, that you received a report from the doctor where they told you that you had fibromyalgia. But the Spirit of the Lord said, this night, you're completely healed by the power of God. Was he right? Right on, she says. Somebody gave you a letter that said fibromyalgia. Huh? Diagnosis uh, was 14 years ago, and I've been dealing with it off and on, and Tonight, um, when you, actually when you're reading the word, I just felt this heat cover my whole body. See, when we talk about Jesus, he always shows up. <laughs> Glory. Praise God. I want you to remember that name, like a Kyler. For I saw <laughs> in the realm of the spirit an angel approach, but I also saw a spirit. And this spirit had in his hand a spirit of depression. On the board, I saw the name Chris. This is what the Lord said to me. He said, tell her that the attack that is against Chris is an attack to is an attack to subvert and to hinder your assignment. It is just a frustration, saith the Lord, to keep you depressed and to keep you down. But the Lord says, I'm sending an angel even to your house, and I'm visiting Chris and Kyler, saith the Lord. Somebody open your mouth and release a praise. Do you know who Chris is and Kyler is? Chris is her son. Wow. And Kyler is her son. Wow. You just gave her the, her children's names. Wow. That's why she shook up like this. And her husband is a little shaken up. Kyler is in depression. You don't know that, but I do. Wow. And that's her, her young boy. Wow. And Chris is her older son. Wow. Now join Pastor Benny and Brian Karn for a time of powerful ministry and a word from God's prophet, which will restore your joy and release a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit's anointing in your life. You know, I'm going to tell you again, if you've been missing the programs I aired, I was sharing with you what I shared with our people about what the Lord did for me. And just in case you missed it, the end of February, I went to the hospital. They put me in, in ICU, if you can believe it. In 40 years of ministry, I never had anything like this happen in my life, where after I came back from Brazil, I went down so fast. And uh, to find out I had congestive heart failure, I went to the hospital, they put me in, in, in ICU and began to drain my system. 
And the doctor said, had I been late one day, been gone. And the Lord really saved my life. This is May now, May of 2015. For the first time today, I feel like I'm back to myself. It took me a while to really get back my strength because my heart was working at 17%. As of this morning, it's 45%. You want to give me a high five? <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. No, yeah. I mean, uh, I want to pray with you at the end of the program that the Lord... In fact, you know what? Let's do it now. I want to pray that God will meet your need before I introduce Brian. Meet your need, heal your body. But I want to give you a piece of counsel. If God doesn't heal you, pray that he will lead you to the best doctors and let God use them. We cannot ignore conventional medicine. We cannot ignore medicine. You know, because it works. If, if God doesn't heal you, find the best doctor. And don't stick only with supplements and vitamins. You need to do what's right for you. That's what I did in my case. I have discovered a new world out there. A lot of precious unbelievers out there that really love the Lord and are respectful and very kind people. Maybe they don't know Jesus the same way you and I do, but they'll find him. I had the finest people take care of me. They saved my life. I, you know, I was crying about it. Doc, these doctors who loved on me and took care of me saved my life. Those nurses were beyond wonderful. You know, they were cheering me when I left. They were cheering and some of, some of them weeping. My doctor, who I just met for the first time that day, March 20th, he took me by the hand because I, I was actually dying. I know this surprises many of you, but believe me, it's, it's the truth. I grabbed his hand. I said, don't let me, don't, I said, please do not let me die. Because I could, you know, I, for two weeks I was in bed, not able to breathe or walk around without this fatigue, horrible feeling of tiredness not realizing I was filling up with fluids because my heartbeat was at 200 per minute for a long time, by the way. I didn't even know it. So I grabbed his hand. I said, don't let, let me die. And he began weeping. He said, I promise you, I will not let you die. Pray for me. When he said, pray for me, our hearts were knit. He's Filipino, one of the greatest uh, specialists uh, I've ever met in my life, heart specialist. So if you have a physical need and God is not healing you, pray he'll get you to the best doctors and let them do their job and listen to what they say to you. God wants you healthy, wants you well, live a long, happy life, enjoy life, enjoy life. The one thing they said to me uh, when, when I was leaving, don't allow stress to take over in your life. Watch stress. Because stress is a killer. It's just for nothing. Huh? That's right. Exactly. Okay, it's all yours. Minister to us. I want to hear you. <laughs> you look so good with that red jacket. I, I'm, I'm glad you approved, Pastor. Go ahead. It's all well, yours. Well, you know, we're in, a, we're in a very strategic hour in the body of Christ, and I'm always glad to be here with you, Pastor. And, and I believe I'm that... I'm glad when you are, Yeah, because you're very prophetic. I accept, Pastor. Bless and you. I, I believe that uh, the steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord. You know, coming into this year... God spoke to me and said that this was a year that he wanted us to completely trust him. Well, now, this is May. This yes. Is half, well, it's, uh, half the year is gone. Yes. Okay. But people still need to get it, Pastor. I believe that. Confidence, reclining confidence to know that God has you. Trust in the Lord, Proverbs 3 and 5, with all your heart. Lean not to your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him. And he promised to direct our path. Amen. I believe that there's much going on in the realm of the spirit. I believe we're in a very strategic hour in the body of Christ. However, I believe that the spirit of God has dealt with me very strongly about the saints of God. You who are watching and you who are not watching or you who are just listening or lackadaisical or, at, or, or are at ease in Zion. I believe God's talking to the body of Christ with everything that's going on, all of these earthquakes and diverse places and hurricanes and riots. Romans 8 declares that the earth is groaning for the manifestation of the sons of God. That there's a people that God is wanting to raise up in this hour who are going to operate just like him in the earth. 
And why don't you be one of those people that God can use, that he can possess, that he can take over you? You know, we always talk about people being demon possessed, but how about being Jesus possessed? Amen. Be Holy Ghost possessed. Filled with By Jesus. God, yeah. let God tabernacle your flesh. So the Spirit of God has been dealing with my heart very heavily about the saints really coming back to that place of prayer and consecration and calling on God. You know, when you read Deuteronomy, the eighth chapter, when it talked about the children of Israel, he said, I suffered you to hunger. I sent you to the wilderness that I might prove you, that I might teach you that man shall not live by bread alone, Matthew 4 and 4, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. If we ever needed to hear from God, we need to hear from him now. Yep. In times like these, we need answers. We need direction. What is God saying? You know, Pastor, while you were going through what you were going through, the Spirit of God told me very clearly. I knew that it wasn't unto death, you know, that the power of God, that there was a great promise over his life. As you, it you're is talking yours. about me now. Yeah, can't okay. nothing happen to you. The Lord just showed me it was a spirit of infirmity. Let me tell you something. Before I went into the hospital, I had a dream. In the dream, I saw the spirit of infirmity. I told my son-in-law, I thought maybe it was the, the spirit of death. He said, Bob, no, that's the spirit of infirmity. I saw this massive spirit. I didn't see the face or the shoulders. It was wearing an armor. It walked into the house where I was and just stood there. It didn't look at me or touch me. Mm -hmm. He, and I kept saying, Jesus, 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 Jesus. And I almost threw a chair at it. And then I woke up. Well, that's what the Lord and, told and, me. And I saw that. That's interesting. Well, you the Lord, say that. well, the Lord told me. And right before all this happened, I felt something was coming like that. I felt like sickness was coming. You had to take care of yourself and rest, Pastor. You got it now. You got it. I'm getting it. You got it. Yeah, you. Can, can I get a high you, five? Let's go. <laughs> I, I'm having people call me and say, please don't travel as much anymore. S stay home more. And we need you around, whatever. It's really right. sweet, but I'm traveling. That's right. Not yeah. as much. You're going to live a long time. Well, I pray that I will. You but, will. But, but you have what you, you say. You, well, of course, but we need to take care of ourselves. That's right. Don't wear yourself out and, and on the ground, <laughs> which I did. That's don't right. do that to yourself. The body God gave us is a gift. That's right. Treat it well. Keep going. John 10, 10, the thief cometh but to steal, to kill, and destroy. But I come that you might have life. Amen. And not just life, but have it more abundantly. abundantly. God wants you to live the abundant life. He wants you blessed. Job 36, 11 said, if you obey and serve him, then will you spend your years in pleasure and your days in prosperity. I love the way. But fact, you must you know obey the Bible, yeah, you, But you must obey him and serve him. Amen. You know? So God is calling you to that place of consecration <clears> and <throat> prayer and really, really getting in that secret place. As I said, when pastor was going through what he's going through, I prayed and, you know, you know, a lot of us talk, but we don't pray. And it's praying time, Luke 18. Men are always to pray and to faint not. Let me tell you, I'm not scared of most of you preachers. I'm scared of those praying women in the church who can call on God. Amen. The praying mothers who can touch heaven. And the Spirit of God said that it was a spirit of infirmity that was attempting to come against him. But he would prevail. And I need you to know this, that if God has a promise on your life, nothing can happen to you. You remember David? There was a promise on his life. You that, prophesied, if I can interrupt you quick. Yeah. You prophesied something would happen to me in February. Yeah, you got mad at me. I did get mad at you because oh, I you didn't got, believe Oh, that. you got so upset with me, Pastor. But it was true. I gave you the this, date. This man knows the voice of, he, he did. He gave me the date. He said, you're going to go through kind of a season. It's going to start February something. That's right. And I thought, oh, no, I don't want to hear this. Oh, he went off on me saying, even but, Pastor Benny gets upset. <laughs> But he said, you'll come out and you'll be okay. That's right. So, Believe the prophet. Good news. Yeah. Glory to Keep God. going. Believe the, Believe the prophet. And so shall you prosper. But you remember David, who had a promise over his life that he would be king. God sent Samuel to Jesse's house and said, anoint one of those boys to be king. And I want you to hear me. Because Samuel didn't know which boy was going to be king. Mm. He just knew it was one of Jesse's boys. So imagine him showing up to Jesse's house with a horn of oil. He doesn't know, but the oil knows 
who's going to be king. So he's trying to pour oil on all of the boys, the men of that, Eliab, trying to pour oil on them because all of them look qualified. But the Bible lets us know that God looks not on the outward appearance, but he looks at the heart. He poured the oil on David, and as soon as the oil got to David, it began to pour because he was the right person. But he did not become king immediately. Matter of fact, he didn't become king for another 20-something years. He's anointed to be king, but he's taking care of sheep. Now catch this. He gets ready to go to battle against Goliath. And when he battles, here's Goliath talking trash to him. I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to kill you. But David has a confidence. And his confidence is 1 Samuel 17, 45. You come to me with a sword, a spear, and a shield. But I come to you in the name of the Lord. Amen. What is the name of the Lord? When you get a chance, read Revelation 19, 11. It talks about Jesus and how he was riding on a horse. He had a vesture dipped in blood. He had a name written on him, which no man knew but he himself. His name is called, verse 14, the word of God. You know what David was saying? You come to me, Goliath, with weapons, but I'm coming to you with a word from the Lord that says I'm going to be king, and I can't die until that promise comes to pass in your life. Wow. I want you to know this. When you got prophecies hanging over your life, fight those prophecies. Fight with them. Wage a warfare is what Paul told Timothy. Wage a war with your prophecy. God has made promises over your life concerning your children, concerning your family, concerning your business, concerning your ministry. Well, it's the devil's job to tell you it's not going to happen. What are you shocked for? That's what he does. He's a liar. You're making me laugh. I love it. But he's a liar. That's what. That's his job. I, I don't know for one minute. What a horrible job. Yeah, yeah. But... What a horrible job he's got. Anyways, keep going. I love this. He's a liar. He can't tell the truth. He's a father of lies. He lies. But God told you, in Romans 8, 31, that if I'm for you, who can be against you? Oh, you know, you when you Jesus look at Paul's Lord. life, I was looking at something in the scripture the other day. Romans 8.18 is so profound to me. Paul said, I reckon. You know, they say Paul is from Israel. I think he's from southern Georgia. He said, for I reckon that the suffering of this present time is not worthy to be compared with the glory that shall be revealed in us. I believe that was at the embassy of his salvation because he said, I reckon. Maybe so. But 10 verses later, in verse 28, he came into a greater revelation and said, and we know that all things work together for the good to those who love God and to those who are the called according to his purpose. 18, he reckons. Verse 28, he knows. But 10 verses later, he gets a greater revelation and says, I am persuaded Amen. that neither death nor no, life, no, no, angels, no, principalities, no, no, powers, no things present, present, no, no things, things to come, come height, no depth, depth. Any, other any other creature, creature. shall Amen. separate me from the love Thank of God Jesus, wow. that is in Christ Jesus. I want you to know there's a word over your life. There's a promise over your Amen. life. Fight with that promise. Remind God of what he said. Remember in Malachi 3, he said when you get, he said, prove me. God likes when you challenge him and put him to the test. And tell him, self, like, God, I ain't got nobody but you. Now, I'm depending on you. Can't let me down. That's how I talk to him. Lord, you all I got. I don't have nobody else. You're my everything. I tell him all the time. He's the hot sauce to my collard greens. He's the syrup to my biscuits. He's the mick to my Donald's, <laughs> the burger to my king. He's my midnight rendezvous. I'm, I'm addicted to him. He's all I got. The and once you said about the king. What? Uh, he's the burger to my king. Oh, my God. That's too funny. <laughs> I'm addicted to him. He's all I got, and I trust him. And this year, God wants you to trust him. Take him at his word. Amen. Numbers 23 and 19, he's not a man that he should lie. Now, that, that, that really makes you happy. But Titus 1 and 2 really gets me. He can't lie. It's one thing to serve a God who don't lie, but he can't lie. If he said it, it's going to happen. If God lies, when he gets done saying it, it's the truth. He can't lie. If God say you're blessed, I don't care what your situation is like right now. You're blessed. 
If God say you're healed, I don't care what you're going through. You're here, healed. By his stripes, Isaiah 53 and 5, you are healed. And I want you to believe that. I want you to hear me. Because God right now in this season wants you to trust him. Take him at his word. I know it's been rough. I know it's been tough. I know the devil told you that you wasn't going to make it, but he's a liar. He's a liar and the truth ain't in him. Mm. The God you serve is able, Ephesians 3 and 20, to do exceedingly, abundantly, above all that you can ask or think. You know what? I believe there's a scripture in Zephaniah that says how the Lord will dance over you. Well, I'm going to tell you something. I believe that when Pastor Benny came through, when the enemy thought it was over for him, I believe God began to dance in heaven. Do you know what Bunky told me? He came to see me in the hospital. What he told you? He gave me a word of, of prophecy. He said, and he flew in from Washington. He said, the Lord sent me to tell you, you're going through a storm. The leaves will fall off, but the fruit will remain. Mm. And the fruit will grow. And he said, your next season will be greater than you can ever imagine. And that's what you told me. Believe it. I am believing and it. And fight with that prophecy. Don't say you got 20 more years to live. Say you got hundreds of years to live. Yeah, what hey, you hey, say. Don't, I don't, don't want to live yourself. hundreds of years. Well, you know. When I'm done, I want to go. You do? We're well, not now, though. I'm not going now. And not even 20 years from now. It, I God's, need around a long God, time. God's time. Finish ministry. Praise God. You know, Pastor Penny calls all the shots, y'all. So catch me. I want you to hear what I'm saying. God is up to something in your life. Amen. And I want you to fight with that prophecy. Fight with that word from the Lord. Fight and know that God said it and if he said it, he'll do it. He's going to do it. I believe it, Pastor. I want to talk to you. You know I'm a prophet. And the Bible declares in Ephesians 4 and 11, he gave some prophets. Now, I'm going to tell you, I know you look at me and say, why is he always asking? You want to know why? Because I'm a prophet. And prophets give instructions. I mean, hey, you know, Elijah, I told you before, would have been seen as crazy in, in this 21st century where folk are struggling. Elijah show up to the woman's house <laughs> and tell the woman, bake me a cake. Yeah. You know, listen, to, you know, it, I told you it made the news. Preacher Ralph's widow of her last meal. It would have been headlined. But I cannot allow what the news is saying to change the principle of the word. Oh, man. Give. And it shall be given to you. I'm getting happy, y'all. My Pentecost is about to come. I'm about to shout and run all over the studio. And it shall be given to you. <laughs> Good measure. Press down. Oh, shaken together. Oh, and run it over. Do you believe that? Because I believe that if you trust God and take him at his word, any moment now, something amazing is about to take place in your life. I know you're sitting there waiting. You say, well, tell me what to do. I'm glad you asked. John 2 and 5. Whatever he tells you to do, do it. Do it. That's it. That's the instruction that was given. Jesus said, fill the water pots. Of course it was crazy. But she obeyed. She received a miracle. Water turned into wine. God's about to turn your water into wine. And what Elisha said. To the, uh, they didn't shoot him. And what Elijah did before him. Well, never ran dry. Exactly. Because she obeyed. She obeyed. You be willing and obedient. You will eat. The good of the land. The good of the land. I Amen. want you to do this quickly, and I don't want you to hesitate. I don't want you to think about it. I want you to know that the God we serve is able to do anything but fail. Amen. I want you to stand on the promise of God. Amen. The promise of God. The promise of God, which declares... Created me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. But he said, restore unto me the joy of my salvation. The joy of your salvation in this season is about to be restored. Amen. You're going to be happy about your salvation Amen. again. Psalm 51, whatever you're doing, I don't care what you plan on doing. The prophet is talking. Tell the dog to hush. The prophet is talking. I want you to sow a seed. Of fifty-one dollars. Why fifty-one? Psalm fifty-one. Okay. Restore the joy. I just asked. That's of, all. Of course, you can ask whatever you can. This is this is your day. <laughs> Restore the joy of my salvation, and I'm telling you that God is about to send revival. Mm, amen. To your church, to your ministry, and your to life, to your family. Yeah. 
in Jesus' name. Well, call the number on the screen. Pastor God, You're God. very anointed. I accept, Pastor. Well, pray with them. Well, Father, in Jesus' name, Amen, Lord. I release a fresh fire Amen. in the lives of your people. And they're known for prosperity. In Jesus' name. Amen, Lord. And may their steering wheel become their altar. In Jesus' name. So that, see, God's moving. I'm telling you, I feel it very strong. What did strong. you just pray? That their what? Their steering wheel in the car. Steering wheel. Becomes their altar. Wow. While they're riding in the car, God's going to meet them. They're going to pray like never before. Lord, in Jesus' name, let it be so. Hallelujah. Well, thank you again for your love and support. Keep calling because God wants to bless you. I'm telling you, I'm feeling the anointing. I've been sitting laughing because you make me laugh sometimes. Call the number on the screen. Father, we believe this is the greatest season for God everyone watching, us. every Salim partner God. watching. This will be the greatest season of life, the greatest time in the name of Jesus. Lord, let this time, May of 2015, be a beginning for us of great miracles, wonders, and power. In Jesus' name, prosperity. In Jesus' name, God's people said, amen. amen. And an old song came to me a few days ago. I began singing, I found a new way of living. I found a new life divine. I have the fruit of the Spirit. I'm abiding, abiding in the vine. And then it says this, abiding in the vine, abiding in the vine, love, joy, health, peace, he hath made them mine. That's Pentecostal. I have prosperity, <laughs> power, and victory, abiding, abiding in the vine. Let's keep abiding in the vine, and God will take care of you. Love you. Bye-bye. Join Pastor Benny Hinn in Israel November 1st through the 10th You'll walk where Jesus walked, from Galilee to Jerusalem, and pray in Gethsemane, take communion at the garden tomb, visit the upper room, sail the Sea of Galilee, be baptized in the Jordan River, and much, much more. So come with me to the Holy Land, to Israel. Life won't be the same, neither will mine. So come, let's experience God in the Holy Land. Visit the ministry website for more information and to download a brochure. Experience Israel with Pastor Benny Hinn. You'll never be the same. Persecution of Christians has reached historic levels with millions worldwide living in fear and suffering for following Jesus Christ. Some estimates indicate that 350 million believers are facing torture, imprisonment, oppression, discrimination, and death. Horrifying statistics reveal that every five minutes, a Christian dies for his or her faith. Pastor Benny Hinn's heart has been broken as he's seen the news stories and heard reports from those who are enduring persecution. And he is asking you to join him now in fervent prayer for those who are facing unspeakable consequences as they stand strong for their beliefs. We must not forget them. Go to the ministry website at www.bennyhin.org and sign up to join prayer warriors around the globe in praying for persecuted Christians. The prayer of agreement is a powerful spiritual force for effecting change in the natural world. So join this global initiative to intercede for persecuted Christians today.